All right, Africa has um, had some significant growth in terms of interconnection for the past decade, and we're here to talk about it, and also talk about the potentials that Africa has and what we should expect for the future. So this is my agenda. We'll look at, we'll take a look back at Africa for the past 10 years. What does the interconnection landscape look like today? and what are the connection drivers, and why should we all be interested in Africa. My next slide tells us the entire story about Africa. Uh, in 2013, over 2.7 billion people in the world have access to the internet. And as a then, it represented around 39% of the world's population. These are the numbers of people that could have access to the internet. And we know the European continent is always ahead in terms of penetration. And we can see from the deck, 75% in Europe had access to the internet as of 2013, followed by the American continent, which stood at 61%. But Africa was 16%, 16% of the entire population had access to the internet. And in 2013, the population of Africa was over a billion. So 16% represent about, I think, 167 million people. So you have over 800 million people without access to the internet. And that is like half of the number of people who had access to the internet in the Asia Pacific uh, region. What about household internet? 41% had access in 2013, globally. Europe continues to lead. 77% had access to the internet at homes. But what about Africa? Only 7%. 7% of the population in Africa had access to the internet at homes. And we know what the implications are. So it will limit people's access to content, um, like Netflix, maybe limited people will have access to such content. Even online gaming will be impacted because you have limited people who have access to internet at homes. But what is the story today? What does Africa look like today? Now, if you look at Africa in comparison with uh, the rest of the world, the number of AS number that was registered in Africanic as at 2013 was 799. And it's quite understandable why we had 16% penetration, right? Yeah. It's simply because we have a less number of networks registered. So, but over time, in the last decade, it grew to about by 200%, yeah, 188%. Today we have, um, I mean, when this slide was done, it was 2,304 registered ESN in Africa. And that is quite a significant growth in terms of the number of networks. So when you have new networks being registered, it tells us the story, it tells us that new providers are investing, new players are coming into the market, New players are building more networks to connect more people. And if you compare that with uh, the number of registered AS number in RIPE, which represent Europe, uh, Middle East, and some part of Asia, it, 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 you can see significant growth as well, 94%, but the growth rate in Africa as a continent was more than that. So, it tells us we're having more network exchanging traffic in Africa. And that is why today the penetration rate is 43.2% from 16% over the last decade. Now, that is quite significant in terms of growth. And uh, what does that say about the population of Africa? Population is estimated as of 2022 to be about 1.3 billion. So... That represents over, I, I think, 500 million people 
500 million people now have access to the internet. That is compared to about 167 million people um, 10 years ago. The growth in Africa, how evenly distributed. If you look at the number of new uh, ASNs that have been registered, you can see that it is evenly distributed across all the regions in Africa. Each region had 3x growth in terms of networks that have been registered. So that tells you the growth in Africa is not just concentrated in one part of Africa. It's the entire continent. The whole continent is experiencing growth. And that's why the penetration rate is also growing. South Africa continues, the southern part of Africa continues to lead in terms of digital investment and also the growth of network, followed by the western part of Africa. And we have other regions, the central part, eastern part of Africa. All of these regions are experiencing significant growth. I use NAP Africa as an example to tell the story. In 2013, NAP Africa had about 124 peers connected to the exchange. And the traffic being exchanged, the IX was about a gig. It's quite small, right? Uh, but today, you have about 799 peers connected to the IX in NAP Africa. And the traffic volume grew to three terabytes. Now, you can relate it to the number of ASNs that have been registered, right? Because when you have more ASNs being registered, more networks have been built, and more people can now connect to the IX and exchange traffic locally. But the growth, the traffic volume um, that we see from NAV Africa is not only due to the new networks that have been registered. There are some other factors that led to that, which we'll see which I'll talk about in the next slide. You can talk about um, growth in Africa without talking about the roles that submarine cable system uh, enabled. Uh, the sub-sea cable companies or investors played a significant uh, role in the growth of internet and digital um, development in the region. In 2010, we had about 16 countries that had access to the submarine cable. Even though the continent has uh, 38 countries, 38 seaside countries, who you could land, where you could land uh, a subsea cable. As of 2010, only 16 of them had access to one submarine cable company. And then in Africa, the entire traffic going to the internet was about one terabyte monthly. Now, if you compare that to the global internet traffic of about 20 exabytes, that's quite small, right? But what is the story today again? Out of the 38 countries, 37 of them, as of today, have at least one or more submarine cable connected. That is about 97% access to submarine cable when you look at the 38 countries that you could land. So the whole of the continent is now wired with submarine cables. Uh, Nigeria, Lagos, where I come from, have access to, we have six that is live pulling traffic, two more being built, uh, the Equiano and the two Africa cable system. So, and it's expected to be eight by the end of the year or so. So that tells us the growth that is happening and all the investment that is taking place in Africa. Now, sub marine cable company played a role, like I said, in terms of the access to international traffic, transit link, uh, importing it into the region. But what about the role of IX? I talked about NAP Africa at the beginning. But we have other IXs as well that has contributed significantly to the growth of internet in the region. 
The southern part of Africa, like I said, continues to lead. Why we have the uh, western part, the IXPN in Nigeria, continues to play a significant ro uh, role in the growth of uh, local traffic within the region. Okay. Okay. So not only Nico. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There we go. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so when you look at the public pairing in Africa, we'll see that it's quite significant. It's quite significant in terms of growth. Um, from the total internet traffic going out of Africa, one, one terabyte as at 2013, to about 26.4 terabyte of local traffic. Ex being exchanged within the region. That is quite significant. And there's a lot that goes into that, from the investment into building new submarine cables, registering new AS number to participate within the acts in the region, and also data centers. Data centers play a key role in the distribution and also internet penetration within the region. You can't talk about IX without talking about data centers, because you need the data centers to collocate the IX and have all the major operators come in to the data center to collocate. And we're seeing significant growth in the investment and build out of data center. And largely this is because of the need to catch content locally. A lot of the CDM providers, the large NSPs, have all seen the need. And even with the adoption of cloud in the region, a lot of people are thinking about Africa, wanting to have their service and edge nodes or a presence in Africa to serve the market in Africa. Today we have 93 data centers already in the region in 15 countries. And it's quite interesting that for most of the countries that you have Submarine cables, you also have data center companies because they plug in the data centers with those huge capacity coming from those subsea systems. Today we have data centers in 15 countries. Now that tells us that we'll, see, we'll still have about 15 more or 22 more countries that will still need to build data centers. And then we have investors who are interested and they're building more data centers. And the data center's demand today is driven largely by the enterprise market, which represents about 93, 95% of the demand. And Sub-Saharan Africa, South Africa continues to take the lead, as we've seen, even from all the data, uh, even in the data center space, and we can understand why. They continue to take the lead, followed by the western part of uh, Africa, which is Nigeria, then Kenya, and also Angola. Why Africa? Why is Africa so interesting? And why am I excited about talking about Africa? Yes, I'm from Africa, right? But beyond that, there's quite significant growth in Africa. And there's a lot of um, demand due to the drivers. Mobile broadband uh, adoption is one of it. Today, Africa has one of the youngest population in the world. We have quite millions of young people in Africa. They want to communicate. They want to, they want to chat. They're on Instagram. They're on Twitter. They're on YouTube. All of these applications are means of communications, and we're having a lot of the young ones adopting these applications as a means to communicate, and thereby increasing the need to get smartphones. We can see growth in smartphones adoption. It's growing, it's projected to grow to about 4% by 2025. What about unique mobile, what about unique uh, mobile subscribers? It's about 500 million as at 2020, projected to grow to about 615 million. Mobile internet subscription is also projected to grow, but all of this growth is due to new SIM cards being registered and is expected to hit about 
1.12 billion by 2025, now which will be about 90% of the entire population in Africa having a SIM, SIM card or not. Now, all of this tells us the level of capital investment that is going into Africa. In addition to the operational expenses to keep this network, and all the investors are also reaping the benefit in terms of revenue, and the revenue from this continues to grow. We're seeing data center growth, like I've mentioned. It's part of the drivers. We've had a lot of announcement from the uh, public cloud providers, the likes of Microsoft, AWS, while we're all making announcement about their local presence in the region, right? So that tells us Africa is exciting. And it's going to be a major market, and it's forecasted to grow to about 80% by 2025. We have key players like MDXI, facility owned by Main One, Terraco, Digital Reality, Rack Center, and also the Djibouti data center in the region. In addition to Equinix, we just acquired uh, Main One and the MDXI facility. Private pairing is also an important driver for the growth that we see. 50% growth from 2017, it's good. And this is because of the data center investment in the region. We're having a lot of large players getting interested in interconnecting with themselves. And this is due to the role that the IX plays as well. So once they connect to the IX, they start seeing the traffic volume grows, then they decide to connect directly. Maybe um, large networks with the cloud providers or large networks with the content delivery network because they feel it's a more cost-effective way to move large traffic. And we continue to see that growth in Africa as well. Content demand continues to grow. Say content is king. We see the CDN, uh, the content delivery network, deploying nodes in the region as well. The likes of Netflix, which is quite popular in the region, is seeing growth and also deploying nodes so as to improve customer experience. The like of AGO deploying nodes also in the region to improve performance. And we've also seen the emergence of local content and uh, long, local content and distributors in the region. Nollywood, Iroko TV, Fame House, and not to talk about the Nigerian music industry as well, that is booming globally. And we see streaming apps like Boomplay, Spotify, Apple Music, all of this contributes to the, to the growth of the use of internet uh, in the region. And Nigeria, as a market, is experiencing significant adoption and growth in streaming services. And it's projected to grow significantly, as we can see from the numbers. Cloud entry, like I've mentioned, the likes of Microsoft, AWS, all making the announcement, and also uh, peering locally within the region. And we can see how it has contributed to the growth in terms of peering traffic, uh, and also the number of cloud providers that are beginning to invest in the region. I have to talk about this as well. <laughs> Yeah, but before I talk about the Equinix investment in West Africa, I'd like to talk about our founder and CEO, founding CEO, Ms. Funke Okweke, who believed in the continent and invested heavily to build the infrastructure, setting up uh, the private, first privately owned submarine cable system, connecting West Africa to Europe. And that helped uh, with the penetration, like I mentioned earlier, right? And that cable enabled the price of broadband to go down in our market by 50% as at launch. And we evolved and uh, built more data centers and going to data center business. And all of those assets have been acquired by Equinix in West Africa. Now, that acquisition enabled Equinix as a company as well to grow the data center market because the subsea system would enable platform Equinix to connect to Europe and also provide 
uh, the metal and Equinix fabric services locally within uh, the region. And this is in addition to all the metro network that uh, we have and also gives Equinix access to 800 plus, about 1,000 now, business to business customers that they can provide the platform Equinix services to. Now, how does the entire ecosystem look like? This is what it looks like, 1,000 on net customer. This is a subsea cable that was built from West Africa connecting to Europe and all the pairing and presence we have in all of the exchanges uh, globally, from M M6 to IXPN, Lynx, M6, D6, and all the pairing within uh, the local ISP within the region. Now, what does the MDXI facility would look like in terms of integration with Equinix? We have the LG1, 2, and 3. Uh, this facility has been added to the global data center site on, on the Equinix map, as you can see it there. So you can see Africa on the map, uh, on Equinix map. And in this facility, you have access to network service provider, content, cloud services, financial service company, and also enterprise companies that are all co-located within this facility. Uh, I think my next slide just wanted to talk about uh, the traffic volume uh, in the MDXI facility by IXPN, which is the second most largest traffic volume in, in, the, in the market. And you can have access to all of the pairs. In addition to M6 Lagos, which was announced, uh, oh, it was launched last month as well. And the, the goal for M6 Lagos is to enable uh, that local content pairing within the West Africa region. And the IX is meant, that's the M6 Lagos is meant to complement the effort of the local IXPs within the region and also enable Lagos to be the content hub in West Africa. So as we can see from the presentation, Africa has a fantastic opportunity. There's great growth potential, both in all aspects of digital inclusion, from subsea investment, um, the IXS, and also data center. Thank you very much.